Welcome back to the Jimizoku YouTube channel. The coolest YouTube channel on YouTube. So we're back. We're back from a little bit of a uh, break. Had to get some things in order. Had to uh, do some things off the books, as they say. Um, Hayden has been working on the RX-7. Getting some work done. Uh, he's got a new Pitman arm on it. So it's uh, steering's a little bit sharper now. Got the throttle kind of figured out as well. So pretty happy with how she's turning out. Got some energy suspension uh, little bits and pieces here. Get the suspension right and get it tight. Uh, the 8.6, I've been working on the fuel system. Uh, I got a new fuel cell. Got a fuel pump. I'm using a Warburl um, 190. Got a Earl's uh, fuel filter there. I ran Dash 6 AN line all the way up underneath the car up to the uh, throttle body here. Ran it up here, banjo bolt into the fuel rail. So my fuel system's all figured out and now it's time for me to start wiring. So the next couple videos that we're going to be making are going to be focused on uh, the 8.6's wiring system. Um, I got myself a Haltech Elite 550 in this box here, premium loom. Um, I got some relays, some fuse blocks, and just odds and ends like that. Um, so we're going to be starting from that point. This video is going to be about making this uh, relay panel here. I'm going to uh, show you guys my wiring diagram, my relays, what those are about. Just kind of explain everything so you can do it yourself too because I do a little bit of research to figure out how to do all this stuff. So I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be a nice guy and I'm going to put it onto a video for you so you can understand how to do it. And you can do it yourself too so you don't have to waste all that time trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. So. Without further ado, we're going to get it down and uh, get going. So, yeah. We're going to get down and dirty, so let's check it out. Okay, so wiring. We're gonna be starting wiring the 8.6. Um, I go with sand, got the Haltech, um, got some fuel fuse blocks, got my relays. I got an Innovate IC2 uh, wideband sensor. Um, it's gonna be used for air fuel ratio and all that. My premium loom here. Um, the premium loom on the Haltech comes with uh, four open slots for relays, so you can run uh, four other circuits. And the Haltech allows you to do, like for instance, if you're gonna be using a fan, you can run that off of like the water temp or something. So when it gets to a certain temp, it'll kick on the fan. Um, so that's nice. So I'm gonna run a couple relays out of here. Um, and then I'm just gonna to have to run run relay for the accessories. Um, so before I start building this panel, I want to explain to you guys um, my wiring diagram that I'm gonna be using. So. Here's my wiring diagram. Um, what I was going for was a simplified version of the OEM wiring diagram. Uh, you can find the OEM wiring diagram online. Uh, it's a PDF. I'll, I'll put a link in the description so you guys can find it if you guys are doing a 8086 build. Um, but my wiring diagram is just a simplified version of that. So I'm only using a couple leads off the battery terminal here and I just try to take out as many circuits as I possibly could because the factory wiring diagram had like five leads or so coming off of the um, positive terminal on the battery. So we had like the EFI system, emissions, we had another power going to the ignition switch. So now um, I just have power going to the starter, to the starter relay, and then to the ignition switch and to the uh, my little fuse pin here. So I guess I'm doing four, but it's less complicated, okay? Trust me, all right? So, Let's start at the battery and I'll start explaining uh, where we're going from there. All right guys, so the battery, the central part, the heart of the wiring system. Um, 
So I'm going to be using four gauge wire for the positive um, power lead and the um, negative ground. Um, I'm going to run a ground just onto the chassis real close by wherever I can find a spot. I'll figure that out later. And I'm going to run another ground through the firewall and then onto the relay panel um, just for like a common ground that's close by um, just for all the like the ECU, the Y band and accessories and things like that. Um, the power, so I'm going to run four gauge to the starter and then from the positive post on the starter, I'm going to run a power feed into the relay and then the trigger source for the, that relay, which would you know, crank the starter, is going to go directly from the ignition switch. So, um, and then we're going to have a four gauge power wire going to my relay panels as well. And that'll be the same as the ground, sort of just like a common power source for all the fun stuff. So now that we passed the battery and the starter, we're just here before a 75 amp fuse. And what this fuse is going to be is sort of a security um, for the Haltech, all my accessories, and my ignition switch. This is going to be the main, the main dog in the whole system here. Um, so after that 75 amp fuse, there's going to be a power feed line coming uh, to my relay panel, and there's going to be power going into my ignition switch. Um, initially, the ignition switch had two leads going into it, but um, the second lead that was on there was going to be used for the ignitions and uh, EFI system, and we don't need that. So we're just going to be running one. All right, guys, so we have our turnkey ignition here. Um, and like all turnkey ignitions, we got our accessory position, we have our on position, we have our start position. So the way you can imagine that when you're thinking about that from a wiring diagram standpoint is that there's like a triangle inside, sort of like a paddle that's going to make contact with these three leads. And these three leads are going to be the accessory, the ignition switch power on or ignition, and then the start, um, which is going to uh, start the uh, starter. <laughs> so when we're off, we're like this, the paddle is over here and we're not making contact with any leads. When we turn to accessory, we're making contact with our accessory lead, and then we're getting power to all our accessories. These are gonna be things like the cigarette lighter, the wiper, uh, dash lights, things like that, things that aren't necessary for the car to actually operate. And then um, when we go to on, we're gonna still make contact with accessory, and now we're gonna be making contact with ignition one, that circuit. And the ignition one circuit is gonna be things like the Haltech, the wideband, things that are necessary for the car to start and run. And then when we go to start, we're gonna uh, lose contact with accessory, still keep contact with ignition, and now we're gonna be making contact with start. So now we're gonna be cranking the starter and firing the injectors, the ignition coils, things like that. So that's why we need to connect the Haltech to the ignition switch to power, because that's how it's gonna be able to start the car. And then once you come off the starter, It'll come back to accessory ignition, and then we'll be able to drive the car and enjoy it. All right, guys, so now that we got the uh, ignition switch all explained, um, when we're switched on to accessory power, um, there's going to be 12 volts coming out of the accessory lead, and that's going to run into the accessory on relay. Um, that relay is going to power um, all of the fuses um, that are going to run to things like I was saying, the uh, wiper, cigarette lighter, uh, gauge lights, um, something else. There's just, you know, things you really don't need, but they're accessories. Um, and then we're switched on to ignition one, which is the on position. That's gonna run into the Haltech fuse block, and that's gonna power ignition on devices like the fuel pump, the Haltech itself, um, the wideband sensor, and I'm also gonna run, in the open spots, I'm gonna run uh, relays for my headlights and my taillights. And then when we get to the start position, that's gonna run to the starter relay, um, which you're gonna, I'm gonna put that right next to the starter just to decrease the length of those wires. So that's gonna run to the starter relay, and then that's gonna switch the um, starter on. You're gonna start it cranking, then the car's gonna start, and then you're gonna be running. 
All right guys, now that we got the ignition switch portion out of the way, we're gonna be talking about the electrical panel that I have uh, designed here. Um, I have all my components just sort of dry laid out. Um, and we're gonna be using two distribution blocks here, uh, six fuse, fuse block here. Just got this off of Amazon. I'm gonna be using some Bosch five pin relays. Um, and then my Haltech loom, um, which has four open spots for four circuits. Uh, those open spots can be using for my uh, Innovate wideband, my fan, headlights, and taillights. So we got power coming from our ignition switch. And so imagine we got 12 volts coming from our accessory here. And if we were to power our accessories, just right out of the ignition switch, which you could do, you could do, um, you'd have 12 volts coming out of the accessory switch and imagine it going to this fuse block and then it running to all the accessories. You want it to power. What it would be doing is it'd be taking 12 volts directly through that switch and it would wear out your switch fast and it would be going by your fingertips, which would not be good probably. So instead of taking power directly from your ignition switch, um, what we're going to do is use a relay. And what a relay will do is it acts as like a second switch in a circuit. So instead of taking power through your, um, whatever switch you're using, for example, our ignition switch, it's gonna be taking power directly from the battery. And what a relay has in it is a magnetic coil and another switch inside. So when, that magnetic co so when that magnetic coil gets charged, it closes that switch inside, which then takes power directly from the battery and then that powers your uh, accessory. So it's not drawing power through your switch. The switch is simply just closing that other circuit and then taking power from the battery. So it's safer, saves your switch, and it's better. So uh, I'm gonna start mounting everything up here. Uh, gonna start drilling, marking my holes, drilling my holes, putting her in, clamping her down on these things here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be getting to it, getting it right, getting it tight. Check it out. Alright guys, so I got all my accessory wires all wired up, got them all crimped, got them all fed onto this fuse block here. Um, I put my wiper and brake switch together, got my horn and hazards together, and then I got my turn signal on a separate fuse. I have my dash lights and clock together on a fuse, and then I have two other fuses, um, and those are going to be used for the two relays that control the flip up headlights on the 8.6. So that's about as far as I'm gonna get tonight. It's uh, getting cold here in Ohio. It's the middle of November, so you know, it's getting pretty chilly, as I like to say. So 
Next video in this series, in this cool, rare series, I'm going to be putting out, um, I'm going to put the dash in, going to get this panel mounted, and then we're going to test run all the wires to where they need to be. Uh, I'm going to do that first before I officially solder everything, just to uh, group everything together so I can make it a little more clean, not just wires all over the place. So that's the plan. Um, thank you guys for watching. Shouts out to everyone who's been watching. Shouts out to everyone who is just now watching. Okay, appreciate all of you the same. So, thanks for watching. Look out for the next one, and uh, we'll catch you later. See ya.